वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इम्पॉर्टेंट नर्सिंग सिचुएशन रिलेटेड टू फ्लूड एंड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स सो फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द नर्स इज केयरिंग फॉर ए क्लाइंट विद हार्ट फेलियर ऑन असेसमेंट द नर्स नोट्स दैट द क्लाइंट इज डिस्पेनिक एंड क्रैकल्स आर ऑडिबल ऑन अस्कल्टेशन वट एडिशनल मैनिफेस्टेशन वुड द नर्स एक्सपेक्ट टू नोट इन दिस केस इफ द एक्सेस फ्लूड वॉल्यूम इज प्रेजेंट ऑप्शन आर वेट लॉस एंड ड्राई स्किन फ्लैट नेक एंड डिक्रीज यूरनरी आउटपुट इनक्रीज ब्लड प्रेशर एंड रेस्पिरेशन वीकनेस एंड डिक्रीज सेंट्रल वीनस प्रेशर सो आंसर इज सी इनक्रीज ब्लड प्रेशर एंड रेस्पिरेशन इनक्रीज फ्लूड वॉल्यूम साइंस आर कफ डिजनिया क्रैकल्स एलिवेटेड सी वी पी वेट गेन अडिमा एंड एलिवेटेड बी पी अ फ्लूड वॉल्यूम एक्सेस इज ऑल्सो नोन एज ओवर हाइड्रेशन एंड फ्लूड ओवरलोड इट अकर्स वेन फ्लूड इनटेक और फ्लूड रिटेंशन एक्सीड्स द फ्लूड इन द बॉडी क्वेश्चन नंबर टू द नर्स इज प्रिपेयरिंग टू केयर फॉर ए क्लाइंट विद ए पोटेशियम डेफिसिट द नर्स रिव्यूज द क्लाइंट्स रिकॉर्ड एंड इट रिमाइंड दैट द क्लाइंट इज एट रिस्क फॉर डेवलपिंग पोटेशियम डेफिसिट बिकॉज ऑफ विच सिचुएशन ऑप्शन आर सस्टेन टिश्यू डैमेज रिक्वायर्स नेजोगेस्ट्रिक सक्शन हैज ए हिस्ट्री ऑफ एडिजन डिजीज The uric acid level of 9.4 mg per deciliter. So answer is B. Requires nasogastric suction because potassium-rich gastrointestinal fluids are lost through gastrointestinal suction, placing the client at risk for hypokalemia. The normal serum potassium level is 3.5 to 5.5 milli equivalent per liter. A potassium deficit is known as hypokalemia. So other options are incorrect because tissue damage or Addison's disease and client with hyperuricemia are at risk for hyperkalemia not hypokalemia. Question number 3 The nurse is assessing a client with a suspected diagnosis of hypercalcemia which clinical manifestation would the nurse expect to note in the client Options are twitching hypoactive bowel sounds negative trousers sign hypoactive deep tendon reflexes so answer is a twitching because signs of hypercalcemia include numbness hyperactive deep tendon reflexes positive trousers sign muscle cramps twitching seizures and anxiety the normal serum calcium level is 9 to 10.5 mg per deciliter a serum calcium level lower than 9 mg per deciliter indicates hypocalcemia question number 4 Which client is at risk for the development of a sodium level at 130 milli equivalent per liter? Options are the client who is taking diuretics, the client with hyperaldosteronism, the client with Cushing syndrome, the client who is taking corticosteroids. So answer is A, the client who is taking diuretics. A serum sodium level of 130 milli equivalent per liter indicates hyponatremia. Hyponatremia can occurs in the client who is taking diuretics. The client taking corticosteroids, a client with hypoaldosteronism and Cushing syndrome are at high risk for hypernatremia. The normal serum sodium level is 135 to 145 milli equivalent per liter. Question number 5. Which client is at risk for the development of potassium level 5.5 milli equivalent per liter? Options are the client with colitis the client with cushing syndrome the client who has been overusing laxatives the client who has sustained a traumatic burn so answer is d the client who has sustained a traumatic burn clients who experience cellular shifting of potassium in the early stages of massive cell destruction such as with trauma burns and sepsis are at risk for hyperkalemia the client with cushing syndrome or colitis and client who has been overusing laxatives are at high risk for hypokalemia so now we will discuss about important points related to fluid and electrolyte imbalance so first point is infants and older adults need to be monitored closely for fluid imbalances point number 2 client with diarrhea monitor closely for fluid and electrolyte imbalance because these clients are at high risk for fluid and electrolyte imbalance due to loss of fluid from the body point number 3 a client with acute kidney injury or chronic kidney disease 
is at higher risk for fluid volume excess because the kidney is not able to excrete fluid from the body. Point number four, monitor the serum potassium level closely when a client is receiving a potassium retained diuretics. Point number five, monitor the client closely for signs of potassium imbalance. A potassium imbalance can cause cardiac dysrhythmias that can be life threatening. Point number six, potassium is never administered by IV push intramuscular or subcutaneous routes. IV potassium is always diluted and administered using an infusion device. Point number seven, a client with the calcium imbalance is at risk for a pathological fracture. Move the client carefully and slowly assist the client with ambulation. Point number eight, calcium gluconate is an antidote for magnesium overdose. When the magnesium overdose and toxicity occurs, then give the calcium gluconate as an antidote. So now there is a question for you for critical thinking. So question is, the nurse notes the presence of U waves on a client's cardiac monitor screen. What actions should the nurse take? Answer will be discussed in the next video.